Good morning and welcome. Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group and our toll free number 800 951 The website at allamericangold.com. And yes, it's, uh, it's the Masters for all you sports fans out there. Uh, Harry Higgs. Is in the lead right now. It's early. Uh, Harry Higgs, most famous for taking his shirt off at the Phoenix Open this year as his playing partner had hit a hole in one and uh, Higgs got the crowd going. Uh, so he's my favorite guy. He's my new favorite golfer just because, uh, well, let's just say this. He doesn't have uh, the the Tiger Woods physique, if you know what I'm saying. So uh, right now he's got the early lead. Tiger tees off a little later uh, this afternoon. My brother's actually there. He, uh, again, it, it's kind of funny when you, uh, for his job, you know, he, as most of you know, he works for uh, one of the largest uh, TV companies, Steve, uh, owner of TV stations in the United States. I think they're now in 140 markets, uh, essentially outside of like LA, Chicago, New York. They're, they're in every other major market. Uh, they, they actually own two stations here in Phoenix, as an example. Uh, yeah, so he, he gets punished. By having to uh, wine and dine people at the Masters, uh, life can be rough, right, Jason? Well, I mean, there's uh, <laughs> hey, everybody has their own lifestyle, Joe. Everyone has their own niche uh, in, in the world. So some people can go to golf games, and some people have to dig ditches, I guess. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, but uh, he did say this: everything's more expensive at the Masters this year, uh, from from the food to beverages to to par- you name it. He said uh, everything uh, has gone up. Uh, there's a big article, actually, it was a a, a video at AllAmericanGold.com. Uh, Phoenix uh, in the Valley of the Sun were number one again. Uh, Not only, like yesterday I said, Maricopa County, more people moved to Maricopa County than any other county in the United States last year. Uh, We've got a red-hot housing market. I mean, we've got a lot of great things going, uh, but we are now number one in the country as inflation goes. If you got time, listen to it. So many, and this is where these small businesses are at. And they interviewed uh, people from from, uh, streets of New York, franchise owners that that have already shut uh, multiple franchises uh, up because of rising costs to, 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 to the bakery shops, to the bar and restaurant owners, really getting close. And I know we haven't seen it yet. And you guys know, I know so many of these smaller business owners, and they're all telling me the same thing. I keep raising the price, and yet somehow... At the end of the month, I keep making less, Jason. And this is how bad inflation is really getting. Yeah, and, and we've said it many times, uh, we haven't seen any kind of inflation of this level in so, much, so many decades. And I think a lot of people don't, I think a lot of these so-called uh, financial experts, they don't really understand how to react to it, how, how what's actually happening around them. So that a lot of bad decisions are being made, Joe. Yeah, we got gold flying this morning up over 18 bucks here, uh, just under $1,940. What a great week for gold. And you're like, what do you mean what a great week for gold? I mean, gold started the week at like 1930, and we're talking about, hey, it's not even at 1940, and you're saying it's a great week for gold? Think about what the Fed did. First, it started with Lale, Lale Brainard. With all of her huge, tough talk, uh, we have a 10-year note that's now at 265. I don't, holy smokes, 265. Uh, uh, James Bullard came out this morning uh, saying, hey, listen, we need need to raise interest rates another three full points. Uh, And, of course, it just makes me laugh, right? That's not even close to what you need to do. Uh, We had the Fed minutes come out last night. So after we got off the air, the Fed has said, listen, we want to sell $95 billion a month off of our balance sheet. 
Now, it just happens to coincide with if they did that for a year. So right now, the Fed's balance sheet, I guess officially, I'm saying $9 trillion, I guess it's $8.9 trillion, But we'll round up. Uh, but if they did 95 a month, that would be a little over a trillion dollars in one year. First of all, I don't even think they'll get to a year before they have to go back. But it just so happens that's the amount of bonds that would mature from the central bank. Uh, $60 billion of that is going to be treasuries. The other $35 billion is going to be mortgages. Uh, this is, Jason, this is going to push up mortgage rates even higher. Uh, and now all of a sudden, uh, everybody out there... Uh, I think Deutsche Bank's the first thing in recession this year, but most of the major institutions, and I'm in this camp. I, first of all, it's not going to be recession. It's going to be worse than that. But I think 2023 is going to be the year. Well, and, and they say that $95 billion sold off their balance sheet is some, is some blistering pace. But if you look at that, it would take them seven and a half years to get rid of all their stuff. So. And, well, listen to this. They've been buying. Remember, they were buying a hundred and twenty billion a month for how long? And now, now this blistering pace, a whopping ninety-five billion. It's it's almost insulting our intelligence. But despite all of that, I mean, think about what gold did. Gold should have been down fifty or sixty, fifty or sixty bucks on all this tuck talk. I think the gold traders are starting to realize this isn't a sign of strength. This is a sign of weakness coming out of the central bank. Pedro Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. 800-951-0592. So, yeah, uh, gold having a stellar week, all things considered. Uh, this would normally be a time uh, when you would expect, especially uh, the, the 10-year note, uh, checking in here, two six six now. Uh, James Bullard saying, "Hey, and this is got to remember this is at a Fed funds rate of twenty five basis points. Now they're anticipating it going to seventy five basis points at the next meeting, uh, which is about a month away. So we're about a month away uh, from the next Fed meeting. On top of that, all of this supply of Treasuries." And I'll go back to the executive order Joe Biden signed about ordering the Treasury, the Attorney General's office, and the Federal Reserve to collect feedback on going to a digital dollar. And they that was six months, 180 days. But then after they get the feedback, 30 days later, in the executive order, Biden wants the Treasury, the Attorney General's office, and the Federal Reserve to propose legislation on a digital dollar. That would put it in October. Why do I have a feeling that by October... The bond market is going to be having major liquidity problems. Because you got to remember, yes, these bonds that the Fed has, this $95 trillion or billion dollars they want to take off their balance sheet, those bonds are mature. Most of those are going to be maturing bonds. Here's the problem. We didn't pay the debt off. We actually are still increasing the debt. So that $95 billion a month has to be rolled over. We've got to resell it again because we didn't pay it off. On top of all the other general issuances that we're currently having to go, Jason, and this is just going to put huge financial stress. And I'm just trying to look at timing because I don't think they do anything by accident. Joe, right? You, Why did the executive order say, hey, by the way, I want legislation ready to go by October? There's a reason. They just didn't throw that out there. Uh, let's just throw, throw, I don't know, how about October? Right, Jason? 
Well, yeah, and you made a good point about rolling over debt. The, the, the monetary system we have is a debt money system. So when you pay off debt, you actually destroy money out of the system. And the system is too weak to be uh, to, uh, closing down the Ponzi scheme. Let's, let's face it, Russia is trying to get everybody to throw their dollars at us to cause us inflation and economic chaos. So the worst thing to do is to pay off debt, Joe. So, so yeah, I mean, this is why the, uh, the paying off the balance sheet is uh, it doesn't seem like the right play for a debt money system. So how, how many months will they get away with this so-called, uh, you know, economic, uh, you know, tightening and, and, and being financially uh, – uh, correct and decent and trying 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 to make it look like everything's right it won't last very long joe and then it'll go right back into quantitative easing because the only way to keep a ponzi scheme going is to add to the pot so yeah you, every time so you know you out there every time you make a mortgage payment and you pay a little bit of debt off that mortgage or you pay off a car loan or something you're actually destroying money out of the the, the crooked money monetary system we have joe so they they need to add money to it you know that that's the only way it works yeah, and th this is a huge problem. Th this is going to be something where uh, these dealers, and remember, they just went through the process, the SEC, of uh, taking companies that were, hey, they played in the bond market, but they weren't dealers. Right, so they 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 were they would they would come in, they'd buy a bunch, sell a bunch, go long, go short, right? Just trying to make some money on the ar arbitrage day in and day out. The Fed now has said, hey, you guys are all dealers now, uh, which just tells you the problem with liquidity because what happens is if there's not enough buyers, the dealers have to take it. And, and if the dealers take all of these treasuries, that prevents them from doing other things, right? That, that takes money out. Hey, we can't lend out money because uh, we – we don't have enough money to lend. Why? Because, well, we're stuffed full of treasuries. Remember, this is why this Fed had to blow up their balance sheet the last time around. Is all of these dealers were like, hey, we're, we're out of money. We don't, have, we don't have any more money. You got to get, this, get these treasuries off of our balance sheet and give us some money for it so we can uh, conduct business. And this is going to come, and, and especially if, if, if we're right. The econ I'm going to tell you right now, there's no doubt about it. The economy is slow. Now, how slow does it get? Where is the tipping point for a lot of these small businesses? Because remember, this is going to be a major small business depression when this thing unravels. And if you go out and listen to that interview with these Phoenix business owners, they were all saying the same thing. Everything costs more. Uh, they're talking to a baker, hey, we used to charge $35 for our standard 8-inch cake, you know, all decorated how you wanted it. That's uh, now 46 And you can hear it in her voice when she's like, and I'm not making any more money. And actually she was sitting there saying, I'm actually making less. Here I am charging, you know, really think about it, almost a third more, 33% more, and yet somehow I have less money at the end of the month, Jason. That's right, Joe. That's right. And, and uh, as I was just mentioning earlier, you know, Lehman Brothers uh, during the housing bubble, when they defaulted, you know, when they went bankrupt, all of, the, all of their principal that they owed on all their debt just disappeared, which actually this is why it crippled the financial system. All it takes, Joe, is one, a couple of these monolithic companies to completely cripple the entire world finance system. Let, let, let's uh, BlackRock. Everyone knows BlackRock. What a massive company. For people that don't understand how big some of these companies are, uh, BlackRock has a GDP bigger than Japan and Germany combined every year. $10 trillion. It's a massive company. If BlackRock suddenly couldn't pay their debt uh, obligations, Joe, like Russia's uh, threatening, uh, what does that do to the finance system of the entire world? BlackRock just defaults and bankrupts themselves, right? It would it would smash the entire world economy. That's that's where we're at. You have massive giants stomping around, and the only way that they can keep this from falling over is to suck all the liquidity and money out of the smaller companies, Joe. Killing you know, it's so funny. We should never allow for it. That's just idiotic to allow companies to be that big because uh, they truly are too big to fail 
And, and to Jason's point, they just end up sucking the life out of everybody. How about Walmart today? <laughs> Walmart says that's it. Trucker pay. We're raising trucker pay. First year truckers at Walmart. I'm not kidding. This is what I should probably. I need to change professions. Hundred and ten thousand dollars a year to drive a truck for Walmart. I can back that up. I know that's the the facts. <laughs> I know that to be true, Joe. You've been there at Walmart ten years. Yeah, you got a pretty nice nice little uh, salary coming in. And, and why is it? You say, well, what does that matter? Oh, it matters a lot. Number one, what do you think it does to all the other major truckers out there? Well, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta match that pay. And then what happens to the the small truckers, the independent truckers? They go out of business because they're not big enough. See, Walmart they can pass along all these costs. Oh, wait, wait, oh you don't want to pay? Oh, okay. Well. We're, we're just kicking you out of Walmart. <laughs> that pretty much, if you're in Walmart, they kick you out, you go out of business. I mean, that's just how it works. Well, and Joe, when all those independent truckers were sitting around not earning money uh, trying to uh, fight the Canadian government, all they were doing is falling further behind. You know, just like, just, just like all those small businesses that went with the mask mandates, while well, Walmart, you could walk right in there without a mask, no problem. All those smaller businesses... We're hurting themselves because customers are like, well, I ain't going in there. I have to wear a mask. You know, so they're making small businesses actually, you know, cut their own throats on top of everything. Yeah, it, it's just uh, this is a terrible, terrible cycle. Uh, the Federal Reserve, uh, the, I believe that they think they're going to do what they're saying they're going to do. There is no, there's zero chance this works. Zero. Just can't do it. And, and you say, well, how do you know? And the answer is simple. They've created so much debt, it's impossible. They can't sell off their balance sheet uh, at that rate. I don't think they can sell their balance sheet off at any rate for any sustained period of time. It's just a show, and Joe. And not cause a liquidity crisis. It's just a show. There they they got to show that they're trying, Joe. That's all there is. You know, I, I think 1.5%, right around 1.5% when they get the, the rates up to about that point, that's where about the time where it breaks. Whether that Every be major economist that I actually believe in trust, guys like uh, Jeffrey Gunlots, Ray Dalio, uh, Stanley Drunkenmiller, all of these guys, Ten-year note at three percent breaks the economy. We're at two six five, and what the Fed is saying they're going to do. I, I got a horrible feeling this October is all of a sudden shaping up to be a lot more significant uh, than than I originally thought it would be. Uh, and again, I don't think they do anything by accident. There's a reason why they came out with the executive order when they did. There's a reason why they gave the dates that they gave. And now, why do I have a feeling uh, the somehow right be, right there around that time frame they're going to say the United States is entering into quote unquote a recession? Uh, by the way, uh, we got to reverse everything back, right? Instead of bond uh, selling, it's going to be bond buying. Instead of raising rates, it's going to be lowering rates. Uh, the gold markets are absolutely going to go insane, and inflation is, and again, there's no stopping it. I don't even want to talk about food inflation again today. There's three more articles. Countries limiting imports, limiting exports, running out of fertilizer. They're talking about yield crops, you know, the yield per acre could be the lowest yield per acre globally in decades. This is this is how significant the issue is. Not to mention, listen, we're in a drought. The West is in a drought. There is an article I saw today that most of Texas now is in drought or extreme drought. China's had the worst weather in who knows how many years uh, affecting their yields. It's like this this perfect storm playing out all over the world, Jason. 
Correct, Joe. And and uh, if it breaks, and it feels like when it's going to break, it feels like it's going to be a huge break. It's like we've all been sitting around waiting for it. You know, we're waiting for the second shoe to drop. And <clears throat> why do I get the feeling in October, Joe? <clears throat> excuse me, that we're going to be seeing possibly wars in Saudi Arabia, Iran, Taiwan, and possibly in Finland at right at the same time. Because then if things like that are happening in October. Then when the markets break, it's it's the it's the worst fault, Joe. It's the worst fault. There's war all over the place now. There's how can we have a good economy when this is happening? And then and it's all false and fake and phony. It's it's about an economic system, Joe. Wait a minute. Hold on a minute here. Um, I may have breaking news after the break. I'm going to try to confirm this, uh, but but we just may have a significant event uh, happening with Russia in China. Um, if this is true, I don't know. I'll, I'll try to research it during the break, but it appears uh, this is Zero Hedge, who I trust significantly, that China has begun buying Russian coal and oil in Renembi's skirting the SWIFT payment system. I'll try to verify this. I'll bring you more. 800 951 Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be right back. 800 951 I've got about $25 liberties left from yesterday at 625 uh, when we sell those through, uh, six fifty is going to be the price. So take advantage there. I've got seventy-eight twenties, twenty-dollar liberties, and say I don't know. It could be liberties. It could be saints. You get what you get because they, uh, where I'm getting them from, they they don't tell me which one it is. They just say, hey, it's going to be a mixture. Maybe all libs. It may be all saints. It may be some of both. Uh, Twenty-two forty. So that's going to save you 15 bucks there, 800-951-0592. So I have confirmed it. Uh, Bloomberg citing Chinese sources, and I'll tell you the sources as well. Uh, Fenwei Energy, F-E-N-W-E-I, Fenwei Energy. Energy Information Service Company traders said that coal shipments will be paid in Renembi. And it will be the first time since the U.S. and Europe had launched harsh sanctions against Russia and preventing Russian banks from using the SWIFT system. Uh, the the coal purchases are going to be for coal shipments in that go, that will land in China in April. Traders are also reporting Russian crude has now been bought in Renembi. Uh, they're saying that the first was Eastern Siberian Pacific Ocean grade crude. So this is crude coming out of, obviously, Siberia. The crude oil shipments are expected to arrive at Chinese refiners in May. Uh, and this is a huge development because, once again, the need for dollars becomes less. Think about the storm that's brewing right now. At a time when the, the, the Federal Reserve, when, when they were buying all these bonds, $9 trillion worth, they were soaking up the needs of, of other people of providing dollars, needing dollars. Now all of a sudden they're saying, hey, listen, we're going to start throwing these back out there. But think about this, Brazil. China, India, right? All of these BRIC nations are like, hey, listen, you know what? You guys wanted to go this route? Hey, now we even need less dollars. I mean, China's already slowly been selling treasuries. If all of a sudden they start buying Russian coal, Russian oil in Renembi, what if Saudi Arabia follows suit? The need 
to hold dollars. Jason, this could be a tidal wave. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's funny, Joe. I was uh, watching some videos last night, and I saw that the, the Fed minute is saying, hey, we're going we're gonna to sell $95 billion. You know, that'll be our, our high, high end off our balance sheet. I don't think it's, it's not an accident that here you, here's a Zero Hedge article right behind it because this is, this is like a chess match. It's a game, Joe. And I, I was watching Russell Brand. I've said this game again. Russell Brand, he's doing really good work because uh, he, he puts a lot of humor in to, to a lot of uh, corporate and uh, central banking concerns about how the world is run. And I started, put, you know, I started kind of figuring out, I have a, a, a very bad feeling that I, I think I figured out what's going on with the war in Ukraine. I think it's a game. It's where they're war gaming, Joe. And I, I know that people are dying. It's not a game for people that are dying and fighting. I think, Joe, that cryptocurrencies and digital currencies are such an uncontrollable asset, and they're trying to figure out how to control it. And all the bankers really care about, they don't care about where their central bank is. They care about control over the financial system. In times of war, countries and leaders will do anything they can possibly do to, 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 to win the war, right, Joe, to, do, to come out ahead. And so under that situation, they can watch what's going to happen with digital and cryptocurrencies during time of war if they simply make a war happen. I think we're going to see all kinds of war the rest of the year, Joe. I mean, lots of threats of war. And you're going to see this posturing about, Joe, I mean, they're, they're going to sell dollars. The Fed is selling dollars. So, of course, the very next thing they're going to do is say, well, here, here's, take some more dollars. Here, have some more. Right, Joe? Who's going to buy them? I'm going to tell you right now, uh, go back to Zoltan Pozar. we got to got to follow this guy. He was the darling of the New York Federal Reserve, and he just so happened to be in charge of the repo market. That's that ugly little black market behind the scenes where the Fed has been bailing out U.S. financial institutions ever since the financial crisis. Very, very quietly. Matter of fact, Wall Street on parade through uh, the Freedom of Information Act says Jay Powell lied to Congress in 2020 because they were, while well, telling Congress the banks were sound and everything was great and don't worry, they were still bailing out these banks. There's no cover here. But remember, he's, this is the guy that's talking about this is the birth of, let's call it, Brenton Woods three. And, and just a quick history lesson. Brenton Woods, this set up the dollar as the reserve currency. This is how we got the dollar to be the reserve currency after World War II. And believe me, this was set up before we ever entered the war. Right? It, uh, we can all talk about how how was Japan able to bomb Her Pearl Harbor. Uh, I, I've got a. This was a. Uh, it was set up because they knew that hey, at the end of this, if we could just get the American public to buy in, uh, we're going to have the world's reserve currency. So Bretton Woods, the original Bretton Woods, every commodity bought and sold in the world had to be priced in dollars. That was the agreement. So everything was priced in dollars. Now. As a caveat, they said, but don't worry, because you, you guys can still uh, trade dollars for gold if you want to, foreign countries. Bretton Woods II came after Nixon closed the gold window, right? And Jason, you, you really had a good way of explaining the difference between taking the gold away from us and taking the gold away from foreign nations. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's the progression of things, Joe. Uh, 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 the, the, the central bank, the Federal Reserve, had to take over America's financial system first before they could take over the world finance system which after World War II. And that, that led to the, well, hey, if you come looking for the gold, we can't let you have that. we got, we got to shut that up, Joe. So I'm going to tell you what's coming next. And, man, I think he's right on. Patriot Radio News Hour, get that gold put away. Bloomberg confirming China is buying coal and oil in Renembi from the Russians. We'll be back right after this break. 
800-951-0592. Gold's up 15. Silver's up 10. The Dow's down the third straight day in a row. Uh, and, and unfortunately, Wall Street's got a long way to go. The, they're going to break the back of it, but this is even bigger news here today. Uh, is this the start? of what uh, Pozar was talking about, this Brenton Woods 3. A new world monetary order centered around commodity-based currencies in the East that will weaken the euro-dollar system, will weaken the dollar, and contribute to inflationary forces in the West. This is why I keep saying it. How many more times do I have to say it? This is going to be a depression with inflation versus a depression with, you know, remember, the, for the last Great Depression, it was a liquidity problem, right? The central bank, and why they took the gold away, is said, well, we've got de deflation. This is the problem. We got deflation. We need to print a bunch of more, more money to get inflation. Think about what our GDP should be right now. We should have GDP of like 7, 8, 10%. Because that's how high inflation is. Instead, most people think first quarter GDP this year is going to be zero. Well, if you got 10% inflation and GDP is zero, isn't that really uh, the economy shrinking, Jason? That's correct. You have inflation. Any assets that you're invested in that performs below inflation is, is detraction from value out of your pocket. So if you're holding dollars and you have 15% inflation, uh, you, you have almost a bear market in cash. So, yeah, Joe, that's exactly what's happening. That's, the, the stock market has been crashing for a year now. Absolutely. The stock market has done nothing. Well, and again, look at it today. The stock market's lower today than it was a year ago, and yet we've got at least 8% inflation that they admit to. Right. And uh, I, I think that, our number that, of 20% is more likely, Joe, which means it's a better That's probably market. the right number, yeah. And, and, and he goes on to talk about interest rates in the coming years. Inflation is going to be much higher than they think. The level of rates is going to be much higher as well. Demand for commodity reserves will be higher. Right, think about it now. Everybody's scrambling. Which will naturally replace demand for FX, that's dollar reserves. And he says, Treasury specifically and other G7 claims. So that's the euro uh, that that that's the the pound sterling, right? The Japanese yen. Not that anyone buys yen anymore, but you understand what he's saying. Demand for dollars will be lower. He says more and more trade is going to be done in other currencies. The quote unquote dollar premium is going to fade. And the dollar is on its way out as the world's undisputed reserve currency. Instead of a Volcker moment, this is what he said to Bloomberg. Instead of a Volcker moment, we've got a Putin moment. And we basically have war, and out of this war will also emerge Brenton Woods three. And he's calling it that because that just makes sense. So you know, they're not, they probably won't call it Bretton Woods 3. That where we're going to go back to commodity-backed money, where gold once again is going to play a big role, but it's not just going to be gold. It will be other commodities as well. Think oil, think food. Think oil, think food to go along with gold. Uh, and, and this is really, I, I think really this is what this whole war is all about, Jason. Yeah, Joe, I mean, I think it was, uh, I was just reminded of this uh, from a listener the other day. It was, I think it's the BIS, the 
Bank of uh, International Settlements, I think it was 2019, they moved gold to a class uh, class one uh, asset, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yep, they sure did. Just in time for coronavirus and, and war, uh, because they're moving the system. I really believe the next uh, Cuban Missile Crisis situation later this year, uh, and I don't think there'll be actual war in Finland, but think about this. If, if, if uh, Putin, which I don't think is making these decisions, I think he's being allowed, he's being told, advised to do what he's doing. If you want to take Zelensky out and put a puppet president in place, why don't you just send like a little SEAL Team 6 in there and just take him out? quietly without none of the news cycle no they built up this massive force and everybody's watching it for weeks and well he ain't going to do that and then and then he did it well now joe think about this oh finland they want to they want to join nato against russia's wishes and you and they just start building up troops on the finland the finnish border they don't have to attack finland to cause the most immense world emergency just the fact that the whole ukraine thing happened and then okay now we're going to put a bunch of uh, soldiers on the finnish border because we can't allow that. Yeah, but just think of how much power and control is going to be put into place. It, it, it's absolutely ridiculous. Like you said, it's harder and harder to, to prove anything else. But by the way, Janet Yellen was talking today, very interesting, attacking cryptocurrencies. Digital assets may be new, and many, uh, many of these issues that they present are not. We've enjoyed the life of benefits of innovation in the past, and we've also uh, confronted the unintended consequence and said that the government needs to support and ensure responsible innovation and that the IRS and the taxpayer are going to, well, the IRS is going to get involved and we need to protect taxpayers from Bitcoin. Yeah, get ready. That digital dollar, that's really happening. Get that gold put away. 800 951 I got two lines open. Uh, if there's any $5 liberties left at six and a quarter, uh, then I've got $20 gold pieces today. 2240 at 800 951 Gold's up 15 uh, Silver's now up a dozen. Uh, Wall Street's down for the third day in a row uh, as news Bloomberg reporting that China has started buying coal for April delivery. So we're in April in Renembi that they have purchased Siberian oil also in Renembi for May delivery. So this uh, definitely is going in further in the wrong direction. And remember, yesterday the State Department was threatening India and China about this. And China, again, very consistent. You know, they keep saying Putin's bluffing about this. They haven't shut the gas off yet. Wait till that happens. Uh, but Janet Yellen, I want to finish with this. Saying that the IRS needs visibility into all digital transactions. Obviously a shot at Bitcoin and the like. We are looking at a variety of options for the payment system. Oh, apparently the dollar payment system is done. I mean, she just said it. That includes, ready? Digital assets. Stable coins, which is, that's her Bitcoin thing. And things like a potential central bank digital currency. Can you say October, Jason? Yeah, yeah, Joe. And what, what brought me to my conclusion about that this is a, a war gaming that they're doing for cryptocurrencies and, and digital currencies. I, I, they want to see in, under times of war, what would countries that try to break out of their control, what would they do? Because I, I came to this conclusion because Russell Brown was talking about the Internet. Isn't that interesting? The Internet's been around a while, right? What happened with the Internet is this, this new technology opened up information and communications that was not controllable. So for the last couple of decades, all they've been doing is trying to put controls over your ability to use the Internet. You know, Facebook controls all of that. YouTube controls all your content for the most part. They are, even though that was a, a, a bad thing, I mean, look at how many people know about central banks and all this, this information that no, most people had no idea about 20 years ago. So they know that this is bad for them. So now, well, here's now an uncontrollable financial instrument. 
And Joe, I think they're trying to get their arms around it quick because this yeah. this goes after what they are most what's most important to their hearts, and that's the financial system. Well, here you go. The SEC Commissioner Chairman Gary Gensler says that exchange registration is necessary for cryptocurrencies. They need to register as a securities issuer and submit to a regime of oversight and disclosure similar to what stocks and bonds face. So there you go. They're gonna, well, they're taking they're going to take the legs uh, out of the cryptos and turn them into a, a just another government regulated type of an entity. Jason. There's there's a reason Joe Biden uh, uh, agrees to hire eighty seven thousand more IRS agents, Joe. They are losing control of this financial system through digital currency. They're trying to figure out how to how to jump on top of it, Joe. That's that's what this whole war is about. This whole economic change, Joe, is all about cryptocurrency war. That's what this is. I'm convinced of it now. After well, know, yeah, and, it, and it's really about right the dollar falling. It's economic and, and like warfare. Said, economic warfare, Joe, for sure. Absolutely. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two twenty dollar gold at twenty two forty. Uh, whatever's left of the five dollar liberties at six and a quarter. Uh, gold continuing to to, to move higher. Uh, Nineteen thirty seven now on gold. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two.